Hey everyone, it's Aaron from Crystal Fonts. Today we're going to be talking about how to wire your transparent OLED display to your 3.3 volt Arduino using SPY. And when I'm done, I'm going to pass it over to Brent who's going to go over to the code and show you how to load your own images onto our transparent OLED display. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. There's a few things you're going to need to get started. First, you're going to want to have your transparent OLED display. The CFA10105 OLED breakout board. Your 3.3 volt Ciduino. We use version 4.2. Some headers that you can plug into your Ciduino for connecting your wires. And of course, your jumper wires and a USB cable for plugging in your Ciduino. All these products are available from our website and there'll be links to them in the description. Alright, let's get started. First off, we want to make sure our Ciduino is using 3.3 volt. So there's a little switch right here, you can see it's a 3.3, VCC, and 5 volt. We want to make sure that switched all the way to the right for 3.3 volt because 5 volt could damage our display. Alright, let's get into wiring this. First, we're going to start with our red wire. I'm going to wire up the Ciduino first and then I'll wire it to the actual breakout board. So this is going to go to your 3.3 volt which is right there. I can hit that pin. Next, I'm going to take our black wire and attach it to ground. There's two grounds. Use whichever one you want. Next, we're going to take our purple wire and attach it to D8 for chip select. That's the digital pin 8. Next, we're going to take our brown wire and put that on A0, that's analog 0, and that's our data command. So I'm going to turn that around. There we go. Okay. Next, we're going to take our gray and attach that to D9 for reset, that's digital pin 9 for the reset function. Next we're going to take our green that's going on a D13 for SCK or the clock. And digital 13 is, oh that's counting, is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th one? 3, 4, 5th one. And last and not least D11 For data. Okay, now that we have them all connected to the Ciduino, we're going to connect it to our breakout board, starting with the power wire. Now it's going to go to pin 1, 3.3 volts. Next, ground wire. Next, your cable select, which is purple. Brown, which is your data command. Gray, which is our reset. Green, skin is our SC clock, and that's going to D0. And blue, which is going to D1. Next, we'll turn on our Ciduino by plugging in the USB, and voila! There we go, it's following our sketch that we'll show in the next portion of this video. Okay, today we're going to take a look at how to completely build, assuming you've never had this loaded on your computer, 
the demo code that's used in the video for this transparent OLED. This sequence does assume that you have the Arduino code loaded on already, so if you don't have that, you would need to go to the Arduino site and load that up. So you can start at the Crystal Font site for the OLED, and probably the simplest way to get the code is to use this uh, zip file that's directly linked there. Um, if you want to get a little fancier, we have this code up on GitHub. And if you take a look at GitHub and look for the trans transparent OLED code, you see it there. And then once you're up on GitHub, you can see all the files that are involved in here. And you can do the uh, clone or download. If you have Git installed in your machine, then you can use the Git functions built into your machine to bring the code down and uh, then you can push it back up and do pull requests and all those things. Uh, to keep it simple, we're just going to download the zip file. So pull the zip file down, let that finish up there. We're done with the browser. And go find. So I've created a folder that is just empty, and this is just where I'm going to put this demo here. And we'll go grab the, uh, open up the zip file and um, yeah so basically we can just do uh, let me see here I need to go up here take this thing I think we can just drag this into the folder and there we go Contr oops view details control plus by the way I'll even out all these columns we're done with the zip file here drive into this level here and we'll see this folder there's some uh, get stuff in here and inside this folder is the inno file and all you have to do is click on that inno file and this will open up the Arduino environment like I said you have to have that already installed in your machine and I do not have a piece of hardware hooked up here but basically you can just do the compile and sketch a compile there's no errors everybody's happy um, this code has a table up here at the top that tells you, looks like it's lost some formatting, but basically tells you which um, pins to set and which pins are used for I2C SPI or um, AD80 parallel. And uh, and then there's no finds up here. You can say, you can define is it SPI or is it parallel or is it I2C. This is hooked up for I2C, which is what was used in the video demo. and. Then there's some other various defines. The lowest level, there's write command and write data, which are, there's the SPI versions of them, here's the I2C versions of them, here's the parallel versions of them. And then once you've got those done, there's some helper commands like the set column, set start column, a set column address, set page address, set start page. These functions are just helper pages that are called below. Fill RAM is used to like to put the checkerboard up there. And then there's the OLED init. Uh, the OLED init, you basically just need to treat as gospel and um, send these commands out there what the uh, factory engineers have determined is the best settings for this display. Um, you can actually shorten the life of your display by like messing around with these settings and getting like really bright or something like that. Um, so just get these pushed out to your display um, in, you know without any changes. And it'll keep your warranty intact and give you the longest life for the display. And then we got uh, show image here, which just takes a uh, takes an image out of uh, Flash on the Arduino and pushes it out to the display. And then there's the Arduino setup stuff. Um, just get the ports ready. Um, turn on your debugging. If it's SPI, initialize SPI. If it's I2C, initialize I2C. If it's uh, 8080 or 6800, those are just done on the ports. And then there's a loop, which just goes over and over. Basically, you call this function called show image, and you give it a, a pointer into the ROM of the splash screen. And then there's a little bit of code to show that you can dim the display using the uh, output current, and then uh, set the display to full brightness. And then it just loops through, like there's a little animation of the tank turning around in the aiming screen and stuff. And so, like for instance, this aiming screen, where is that defined? Well, that's over in this other file up here, this the, this header file. And here's the aiming screen. So each of these screens, there's all the tank animation screens. 
splash screen. It's got the like, logo and the part number in it. So the aiming screen um, is basically it's a 128 by 56 screen. So each of these lines has 128 pixels going across. They stretch way over to the right. So it's 128 pixels going across, and there's seven lines. And each of these seven lines has eight bits in it. So this 0x92 represents a column of eight pixels tall, one pixel wide, in the top seventh of the screen. This 24 is, again, eight pixels tall, one pixel wide, in the second page of the screen. So how would you create this data? I mean, you could actually just edit this yourself. If you wanted to turn off these pixels, you could just put in 0, 0, and they'd be off. Um, let's not do that because it'll script the code. Anyway, so how do you create that data? Well, let's go take a look. So Crystal Fonts has a little utility called Image to Code that we created. And if you run Image to Code, you can put a file in. You can just um, drop a file in there. And so let's take that aiming bitmap and drop that file in there, and then it'll give you some options. But before we get too far in that, let's talk about this aiming bitmap file. If you do properties on that and do details, you can see that it's a 128 by 56 file, and it's one bit deep. That's pretty important. So you need to make sure that your editing software that you use to create that file, um, I use Photoshop, but you can use GIMP, you can use Paint, whatever software we use to do that, you need to make sure and export it as a single bit file. Um, if we open this up and zoom in on it, you'll see that it's, um, well, maybe you'll see, wow, anyway, you'll see that it's, um, it looks jaggy, it looks 8-bitty, because um, it, it's not a whole lot of dots. But you can't have any grayscale on here. You can't have any smoothness. It just has to be a monochrome bitmap file. All right, so you open up Image to Code, and there's a whole bunch of settings here. Well, the cheat sheet is in this Image to Code Settings PNG file. So if you just open up this Image to Code Settings, you will see that I've got the second column here checked, so we'll check that. And then it's the first of these two options. That one's already checked. It's the leftmost of these two options. That's already checked. These options in here, they look a little cryptic, but basically, when we were looking at the code, I said there was each byte represents one column. Here it is, and there are 128 columns going over. The difference is that some displays have the MSB on top, some of the displays have the MSB on the bottom. So you need to figure out which that is. Honestly, I usually just um, do it by experimenting. I try the MSB on the top. If it's all goofed up, try the MSB on the bottom. And almost all of them seem to go left to right, but the MSB will be different. And then there are some displays where the MSB where the byte is laid out horizontally instead of vertically. But we're vertical, LSB's in the top, and we go from the left to right. And we've got the file in here, gives you a little preview. So you just do convert, and that will open up Notepad. And here in Notepad, you'll see those seven lines, each seven lines having um, 128 bytes. So if we go back to our Arduino IDE, and remember this is the aiming bitmap here, and if you compare these two files, you'll see this like 92, 92, 10, 10, 0, 92, 92, 10, 10, 0. So these are the same files. So basically, you take this code here, you copy that, you come up to here, you paste it inside here, and maybe do a little editing to clean up the indentation and extra lines and stuff. So that's how you get these images created. All right, so that is an overview of the code, and if you just basically pull the stuff down off of the zip file on our site or GitHub, and it goes in the Arduino stuff. You don't need any funky libraries or anything like that, and it's been tested, and it works right with the display. We want to make this as easy as possible for you, so we've created a quick start guide, which will walk you through everything we've just done in this video, and this will be available for download, and the link will be in the description below. As always, we want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. We'd love to have you.